We have reached an interesting point of this course. Two things will change now. First, from now on, the number of objects is going to be unknown and time varying. Second, both the states and the measurements are going to be represented by sets, and we model both as random finite sets. One of the main purposes with this week is to learn about random finite sets, which are random sets with a finite number of elements, with the objective to understand their properties and how they can be used to model all the quantities that we care about in multi-object tracking. In this video, we motivate why we use random finite sets and list some of the things that we need to learn more about before we can make full use of the advantages with random finite sets. In earlier parts of this course, the number of objects was known and constant, and the state was represented using a matrix. Similarly, we also used the matrix to represent the measurements, but the number of measurements was unknown and time varying. We introduced a mapping pi that randomly shuffles the clutter and object vectors before storing them in the measurement matrix Z. So even though the measurements in Z were ordered, the order was random and did not convey any information. Let us look at a short video of real traffic to explain why we model the number of objects as unknown and time varying. As you can see from the first frame in this video sequence, there is roughly a handful of visible dynamic objects that we would like to keep track of. Shortly after that, most of the objects that we saw in the first frame turned left or right at the intersection, whereas new objects have become visible and one car has even entered our own lane. As we continue, objects will continuously appear and disappear, and we note that most of the objects that leave our field of view are irrelevant for controlling our vehicle. Also, once the vehicles have left our field of view, it is essentially impossible to keep track of them. To handle the type of scenarios that we illustrated in the video, we use models according to which objects appear and disappear with time. The basic idea is that we want to ignore objects that are outside the surveillance area, which is the area around the vehicle that we care about. And this means that from the perspective of our tracking problem, the number of objects vary with time. In most cases, we care about the states of the objects that are present. We might want to estimate all of those states and we might want to compute the probability, say, that there is an object less than 20 meters ahead of us in our lane. Knowledge about the states of the surrounding objects is very useful. For instance, if we want to determine how to control our vehicle. A third property which is useful to observe is that objects have no specific order. That is, at any given time, there may be a number of different objects around our vehicle, and there is no obvious and general way to order all the objects. More importantly, as long as we can extract the states of all the nearby objects, we have all the information that we care about. To handle the fact that objects may appear and disappear with time, we represent our state as a set, where the elements of the set, xk1 to xknk, are the state vectors of the different objects. It definitely makes sense to question why we want to use a set instead of, say, a matrix to represent our state. One basic property that I find appealing about sets is that they are invariant to order. That is, regardless of how you order the elements in the set, you still have the same set. This probably sounds rather technical, but several appealing properties follow from this. For instance, whenever objects appear and disappear from the scene, we can easily add or remove elements from the set. And we don't need to come up with a rule for how to order the elements in the matrix whenever elements are added or removed. Also, we normally want to estimate the set of object states, since that set contains the state vectors of all the nearby objects. And it's therefore natural to also use it as a state representation. It is also true that there is a one-to-one -one mapping between the physical reality and the set of states, which is another property that I find highly appealing. For instance, if you know the states of all the nearby objects, the set boldface xk is just the set of all those vectors. We can visualize the set boldface xk in a toy example, where the state vectors of the objects consist of two-dimensional positions. At the first two time steps, there is only one object present, and the set contains the state vector of that object. From time 3 to 23, there are two objects present, and the set simply contains the two object states. 
Note that we visualize the object states using two dots, and the set xk makes up the minimal representations of the locations of these two dots, since it contains the two vectors without bothering about how to order the vectors. Over time, the two objects change their positions and the state xk changes accordingly. Then at time 24, one object disappears and we are left with one object and a state xk that contains the state vector of that object. From now on, we assume that both the states and the measurements are sets. To describe our uncertainties in these sets, we model them as random finite sets. This means that we have uncertainties in both the number of elements in the sets and the elements themselves. On a conceptual level, the Bayesian filtering recursions are still performed in the usual manner, where we use the chapman kolmogorov equation for prediction and base rule for update. We've already mentioned a few arguments for representing the state as a set. Now, apart from those arguments, describing both the states and the measurements as random finite sets gives us a uniform framework that we can use to model all aspects of multi-object tracking. For instance, we can describe how the set of objects changes with time, as objects appear, as they move across the area of interest and disappear. But random finite sets are also great for modeling the measurements. The framework is flexible and can be used to model extended objects, spawning, and lots of other phenomena in an elegant manner. Even though this is beyond the scope of our course, once we have switched to using random finite sets, there are powerful tools for deriving the prediction and update steps that have enabled us to derive several update rules that would have been very challenging to derive otherwise. In the past, you have perhaps used things like root mean squared error to evaluate the performance of an estimator, but that doesn't work in multi-object tracking. Random finite sets enable us to develop metrics that are useful performance evaluation when the number of objects is part of the quantities that we want to estimate. Finally, it's reassuring to know that the above recursions would give us the true posterior distribution of the set of object states, and we can use that to drive beige optimal estimators. On the other hand, it is also possible to drive beige optimal estimators using other representations, even though we argue that it is generally more elegant and convenient to do it using random finite sets. Hopefully all of this sounds promising and interesting, but it's also clear that we need to learn several new things in order to do this. For instance, what is a random finite set? So far, we haven't said almost anything about how to deal with such random variables. From the equations, it's also clear that we want to be able to integrate over sets. How are those integrals defined? And what about the distributions? How can we describe distributions over random finite sets? What kind of models can we use for measurements and motion? And how can we approximate these distributions to obtain tractable algorithms? And what kind of metrics can we use to evaluate performance of the estimates that these algorithms produce? The list is quite long. We'll start from the beginning and eventually try to answer all of these questions. Hopefully you'll find it interesting and rewarding to learn about this important framework.